Hey guys and welcome to another Zebras Do's and Don'ts video. Now this time I'll give you a bunch of general quick tips to help you better navigate, sculpt and orient yourself in ZBrush. Okay, let's get started with one of my personal favorites, Poly Group Selection. Alright, and this don't will be don't misuse the selection of poly groups. So just that we are on the same page, you can separate geometry by Ctrl Shift clicking and dragging like this to isolate pieces of the mesh and then you can either press Ctrl W to assign one poly group to these isolated pieces or go on over to poly groups over here then auto group to assign random colors to these separated pieces. Now after that you can now either press Ctrl Shift click to isolate parts of the mesh by poly group or you can either Ctrl Shift click and drag to isolate a bit of the group then press Ctrl Shift Q not A but Q to grow the groups. And Ctrl Shift A by the way grows the entire mesh, Ctrl Shift Q will grow just the groups selected. This is very handy to know. Another don't here would be to randomly Ctrl Shift click on the mesh to isolate pieces. It might work but usually you just end up isolating rings or polygons. And this happens because you are clicking on the edges instead of the polygons or the points themselves like this. So here Ctrl Shift clicking on the edges will isolate the rings or polygons which you might want but not the entire group or the mesh. So just keep that in mind when you're isolating things. Up next we have don't just use masking to move objects. Instead you can actually use the move topological brush with a size of 1 to move separate meshes around like this. And yes, I can see it's deforming a part of the mesh, but I'm pretty sure this is a bug and, because it's never happened to me in a previous ZBrush version. Could just be me, but I'm pretty sure it's a bug. Okay, next up we have do use the shift button to make straight lines. You may already know this, but all you have to do with most brushes is click and hold down the left click and then hold down shift and then finally drag to the location you want the straight line to be drawn in. After that you can let go of shift and this will draw a line following the path drawn out by the red line. You can continue this by holding down shift again and then dragging the mouse and letting go of shift to draw another continuous unbroken line. By the way I'm doing this all the time while holding down the left click. It's a bit of a weird transition but you will get used to it after a while. Another do would be to use dynamic subdivisions to better control your geometry when working on hard surface meshes. Here I have a simple cube and I could use subdivisions and then dynamesh it but if I needed to change something I would really struggle to chop and change things because this method is quite destructive. A better way would be to use dynamic subdivs, shortcut D or use the menu over here and you will get subdivisions without the actual stress of multiple polygons on your PC. From here you can customize the settings to what you want it to do. By the way these yellow orange dots are showing where the actual location of your edge vertices are. If I press Shift D to get out of dynamic subdivisions, you will see that the geometry lies right on the points at which these circles were at. Another cool thing you can do is use creases and subdivision levels to control the type of edges you have over here. Use creases over here to crease the edges of your mesh and then use the crease level over here in conjunction with the subdivision level over here to control how soft or hard the edges are. The higher the subdivision number the more control you have and also if the crease level is equal to or higher than the subdivision level the object will have very sharp edges. So what I usually do is I subdivide to maybe 3 or 4 and then play around with a crease level of around 1 to 3 to get a good level of smoothing. As you can see you can get some really cool and quick results with this. Next up we have don't forget that hiding your masks is a thing. This can be done using the Control H option to hide your masking. I'm telling you about this because sometimes you hide a mask by mistake and don't realize this happened. So don't forget that this can be done with Ctrl H and if you want to undo it just press Ctrl H again just in case you're wondering why you're moving things and things aren't actually moving. Alright and next up don't forget that some brushes have multiple functions like the smooth brush. You can go on over to brush, smooth brush modifiers and then while holding shift change the weighted smooth slider to 1. This will enable smooth stronger on your brush and you can check what the other values do on your own. But while we're here on the topic of modifying brushes you can also use the Accu curve or accurate curve function under the curve menu to make your points far sharper on the move brush like this. So instead of it being rounded when you pull out it's a lot sharper and this could be great for creating horns or something of that sort. And if you like what you see do be sure to check out my website, my blog or my discord to get more information on 2D and 3D content. Next up don't forget that there are multiple ways of saving in ZBrush and they don't give you a really good tutorial on this but you can save screenshots of your work using the document then export over here. You can save the entire project by simply pressing Ctrl S like you would in a normal file 
You can save the tool which will save all the subtools in your currently selected tool by clicking save as over here or you can export the currently selected subtool as an OBJ by clicking on export over here. And finally you can use the FBX exporter over here to export tools as FBX files and you can select all the tools, the current tool, visible etc depending on what you want to export. There are a bunch of other settings here which might seem super daunting but if you just read over them you'll notice that they're not so complicated and quite self-explanatory. Next up, do make plenty use of the shape initializer when trying to construct simple objects. Simply click on any non-poly mesh tools, then click it again to bring up the tool menu and select any basic tool that you want. After that you can go down to initialize and change a bunch of parameters over here. After you're done you can simply go to make polymesh 3D over here and now you have a super complex object, well not that complex, made with just a few simple clicks. By the way the initialize menu can be used on normal subtools to initialize them into basic primitives with the values selected over here. Next up we have don't panic when you lose your mesh in the document as you can press F to frame the current mesh to your screen like this. And last but not least we have do make sure to copy and paste custom brushes into your Z startup folder to make your life a little bit easier so that you can access them immediately on starting up ZBrush without manually needing to import them all the time. You can access them by pressing B for brush and finding it here at the bottom of the menu. By the way if you have an entire folder of brushes that you want to use this method can be trouble so for this I would recommend copying the entire brush folder to here instead so that you can access them in your lightbox. The shortcut for this is the comma key or you can just press the lightbox button over here. Oh and one last tip while we're here, if you like a brush from this custom menu that you see over here, just go on over to it in the ZBrush folders and copy and paste this specific brush into your Z startup folder so that you have access to it immediately. I did this with the Trim Smooth Border Brush as I use it all the time. And hey that's it for this one so like it if you liked it, dislike it, if you didn't let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section, check out my new website, my discord, my blog and I will see you in the next one.